And we're live. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. I'm Deborah Eckerling. I'm the author of Your Goal Guide, a roadmap for setting, planning, and achieving your goals, and founder of The Dev Method. And today on Gold Chat Live, I'm so excited because we're talking about a topic that's, I think, even more important now than it was when people could actually go and leave the house and see people in real life, and that's collaboration because so many people are living this, um, shall we say, secluded, safer at home life. And now, well, I'm in California and on top of everything else, we've got the bad air quality. And okay, I'm totally digressing. The point is, uh, Gold Chat last night on the Twitter chat, we had a wonderful conversation on collaboration. And today, we have a great guest who just finished a book collaboration with four other people, amazing, uh, Mike Alton, who I know from years ago from my social media examiner and social media marketing world days. And I'm just thrilled to have you here. So Mike, welcome. Thanks, Deb. This has been a real pleasure um, getting getting ramped up uh, for this. We had we had a lot of fun you know, with the summit last month and it's been kind of a cool, um, rekindling of, of you know their, their friendship and the camaraderie because you know yeah we talked a long time ago and and then kind of went our own ways and this has been great well and, and we had the so last week's topic was branding and that yeah. was one of the the topics that came up is you know you brand yourself so when you meet people you know each other and then when you meet them again you can reconnect and make reconnections and what was it like three months ago? You said, Hey, who loves LinkedIn and wants to talk about it? And I like raised my hand, like as high as you can electronically. And I got to talk uh, about LinkedIn goals for your Agora Pulse Social Pulse Summit. And that was fun for me, but it was an excuse. Like we need excuses to reconnect. It was a reason to reconnect, which is great because we have talked more in the last two months than. We did in the years that we've known each other and you just released a book with some awesome social media friends some i know and some i don't know so why don't you before we jump into the whole bigger picture collaboration uh why don't you share a little bit about yourself and about ultimate guide to social media marketing and and how you ended up writing a book with four other people yeah, so that is that is a fun story. I'll try to keep it brief. Um, for those who who are watching and, and maybe don't know me, I'm a longtime blogger. Uh, I started the social media hat almost a decade ago, uh, talking about all things online marketing. Um, really got into blogging and have become a bit of an expert on blogging. I teach blogging. Uh, had developed a reputation as a prolific blogger, and that's usually what I speak on when I speak at events. And a few years ago, kind of. In, intentionally created a, a mastermind group with Stephanie Liu and Jen Herman because uh, we had some shared relationships and friendships and a lot of shared interests. And as a consequence of that marketing or a mastermind group, we came to realize that one of the things that we always wanted to do individually was have our own private membership group. Uh, like a paid membership group, right? Where people are paying you every single month, except none of us had the time to do that. And we brought in Amanda Robinson and we formed the 360 Marketing Squad, the four of us, and a paid marketing group, a paid membership group. And that's been a huge success. That's been going on for about two years now. We did a Facebook Live show for a while and had a lot of fun doing that and have more important than the mastermind group and, and everything else, we have a really true, amazing friendship. Uh, I get to lean on these women every single day and we share each other's successes and challenges and it's a phenomenal uh, friendship. And then we had the opportunity a year ago with Eric Buteau, who's written with Jen Herman in the past to work on this project with Entrepreneur Press. So we decided how we were going to divide up a book that's about all of social media and it just made sense to involve us uh, because the whole point of our group is that we all have our areas of expertise, right? I am not an expert on Instagram. <clears throat> I'm definitely not an expert on paid ads or chat bots, but 
Amanda is, right? <laughs> Jump an expert on Instagram. You know, Stephanie is amazing when it comes to live video and social strategy and creating teams. She comes from an agency. So we're able to really conquer everything you need to know about social media. And that's what the book is for. So we started writing it 13 months ago uh, is when we signed the contract with Entrepreneur Press. Uh, took about six months to really pull it all together. And then, of course, they had to publish it. So it just came out last month. Everything you need to know about social media marketing. And it came out, was it the day before the Social Pulse Summit? Yes. Yeah, was that? Was the day that... before Social Pulse Summit, the day after the first day of remote kindergarten here in the Alton mm -hmm. household. So that was a momentous week for me. Okay, and, and I did put the link. People can still watch the sessions from the Social Pulse Summit till September 27th. That's right. Yeah. So it was a free summit all about LinkedIn. There's some, so there's a lot of topics that obviously cross over into multiple platforms, but the focus was, was LinkedIn, you know? So if you're watching and you want to really up your game with LinkedIn, you want to learn how to do LinkedIn ads or utilize communities or live video or how to really use goals and, and make sure that the time that you spend on LinkedIn is worthwhile, then you can go to summit.agorapulse.com. There were 27 sessions plus two keynotes that we live streamed into our free community, Social Pulse community. And it's all available for free uh, for two more weeks as of today. Excellent. So basically you had like a collaboration week because kindergarten, a virtual kindergarten was family collaboration. Yeah. The book with you and your four co-authors was Tuesday. And then this great summit you put together was Wednesday. But it really, I mean, the first question that we asked to chat last night, which is what is collaboration? You kind of really um, answered that already. And if anybody wants to chime in in the comments, please feel free. But it's, as I mentioned in the intro, now is a really good time to collaborate because you can't leave the house and you should be using your um, bonus time <laughs> is what I call it, you know, the found time on developing projects, but sometimes there are projects you can't or don't want to do on your own and and collaboration. Did I miss anything? Well, I think you've really hit it spot on right now, how important collaboration is. Before this, it was wonderful. I was a huge fan of collaboration. I've been a fan of collaboration for years, working with other people to achieve something really interesting and amazing, often something you could not have achieved on your own. I guarantee you, I could not have written that book on my own. I wouldn't have gotten the deal. I wouldn't have known everything that we put in the book. Could not have done it on my own. But today, that collaboration means something even more because it's an opportunity for you to work with and connect with other people that maybe you wouldn't normally do. And when you can't leave the house, when you are in lockdown, or at least it's not as safe or convenient as you would like, depending on where you are uh, in the country, the world, to go out, having a reason to connect with somebody else and work with them on a regular basis, that's important. We need that as humans. We need that connection. Uh, so collaboration is, I would say, vital today. Okay, and we're, and we're gonna, at the end of the live, we will give a bonus goal. So so we're gonna start thinking, I, I'm kind of putting it in Mike's head because it's already in mind. What what sort of collaboration-y sorts of bonus goals can we give? Hmm, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. And I, the thing with collaboration too is it can be something really simple. You, I have a mm. client who, writes articles with someone else. Sometimes she writes them on her own, but she likes to collaborate to get the extra perspective. You know, it's any sort of, um, any sort of situation where the many is better than the few is perfect for collaborate, like your summit. And, and what I loved about the summit is that it was a mixture of names that I knew and people who became new friends because that's another good reason to collaborate. You get to introduce other people to your audience and vice versa. And, and the power together, just sharing ideas and spreading your message is even stronger. I'm glad you brought that up because that's actually something that's been really important to me uh, with the summits that I do. Because uh, for those who don't know, I do this every quarter. Uh, every single quarter with Agora Pulse, we put on a virtual summit of some kind. 
the past few have been somewhat broad in scope. I mean, they're all online marketing, right? But they've been somewhat broad. Uh, this past one last month was focused on LinkedIn and I really liked that approach and we're going to do it again. So in November, our next summit, that'll be on Twitter. And, you know, in the coming quarters, you know, we'll focus on Facebook and Instagram and so on. But when I first started doing these, I focused on the names. I focused on bringing in big known influencers in the social media marketing space. And I still bring in those names. I mean, these are wonderful people. And I love being able to collaborate and work with Neil Schaefer and Donna Moritz and Stephanie Liu and Jen Herman and all these wonderful folks who can bring in their expertise and, and their ability to teach on camera. But I also wanted to lift up voices that people didn't know and you know connect with folks who are either a haven't established the audience and the name that the rest of us have perhaps maybe they're a different part of their journey or maybe that hasn't been their focus right maybe they've been uh really interested in reaching a, a smaller niche or more specific niche or maybe they've been what we would call a practitioner where they're doing the social media for somebody not necessarily speaking or teaching or, or writing. And I like having that mix uh, in these summits. And, and I think to your point, it's a great opportunity for new relationships to be formed. Um, and it's certainly a wonderful chance to learn something that you might not have learned if you were just seeing the normal speakers. Exactly. And the the point that, that, I, that I love that you and I both made is if you're building up your reputation for something, don't be afraid to pitch yourself to a bigger collaboration because it, and it, it goes into what I talk about all the time. You know, when you're you're starting to figure out your goals, you know, what is goal to hope you? What do you want out of life? It really starts with who are you? What do you have to offer? And how is it unique? Other people need to get to know you so keep that in mind even if you're not that name yet you still have a voice and you have something to teach and let that propel you as you move forward so there you go oh uh one of our our social media friends natalie, hey, natalie. <laughs> hi thanks for joining us she's excited about the agora post the whole twitter summit i am too, I am too. it's gonna be awesome <laughs> you know i have a twitter chat We'll talk, wink, wink. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, had to mention that. Sorry, not sorry. So That's right. this leads into the next question, which is why, when is it a good idea to collaborate? I mean, we've, everything kind of like merges over each other. But uh, one thing is good that we mentioned is if you know things other people don't or if someone else knows something you don't, it's a good idea to collaborate. What other situations do you think are good for finding partners, whether it's a small project or something that's big? Well, one of the things that I actually talk about when it comes to live video is exactly what we're doing right here. You bring on a guest in a live video show setting, just like you're doing, and that guest typically will share the live video with some of their audiences, and you might reach new people uh, either while you're live or, or after the after the event and collaborating with other people in your space can have the exact same impact, whether it's a live video or a piece of content or an event, whether it's you know offline or online, it doesn't matter. There are opportunities there to reach their audience. And like I said, I usually talk about this from an influencer marketing perspective, but it works the same with collaboration. Influencer marketing people sometimes think that means I'm a business and I'm paying the influencer, which is true but it can totally mean partnerships with other individuals or businesses in the space, other brands, whether it's personal, professional brands. So, you know, a great example would be a mortgage, mortgage company that collaborates with a title company in their geographic area. I'm in St. Louis, Missouri. So if I'm a mortgage lender here in St. Louis, it would be a good idea for me to collaborate with title companies and real estate agents in the area, right? So that we can refer customers back and forth and collaborate that way. Now, what that actually looks like might mean just, I'm going to recommend you every time I'm talking to somebody that doesn't have a mortgage yet, but they're looking for homes. Or it might be, let's create some content. Let's create a video together that talks about the ease of finding a house or even more timely today, 
if I'm looking for a house in St. Louis, Missouri, how does the pandemic change that? How can I, as the mortgage lender or real estate agent, help you, the new potential homeowner, understand the differences in the market today? How are we going to make you safe? How can you look at houses differently? I mean, I could go on and on with this example. The point is, let's come up with an idea for some content or an activity or something like that. And we collaborate on that. We put both our names on it, right? We share it with both of our audiences and we help both of our audiences learn and get to know us both at the same time. That is, it's so perfect. And I'm such a fan of brainstorming and this really leads to great brainstorming exercise. Think about who you are, what you offer, but brainstorm who would be a good partner for you, who would be a good referral. And I've been having a ton of these conversations when I, I go to events, I meet people, we say, okay, let's have a conversation. And the conversation really is based a lot on after we do the, hi, how are you? Uh, how are you surviving bits? It's what is your focus? Who's your ideal customer? Who are you trying to reach? And then the other per then turn it over to the other person. Okay, who are you trying to reach? So start thinking about uh, who your ideal is. And once you think of your ideal, first of all, they kind of come to you. When you have your focus, when you have a certain collaboration in mind, it's amazing how the universe provides. And this is a whole different rabbit hole. So I think I'm just gonna like rain that one back here. But it's sort of like, you know, you're dri back in the day is when you were always driving and you never had a silver car. And then as soon as you get a silver car, you see all the other cars are silver or blue car. And then all the other cars are blue. You don't notice what you need until it's in your head or what you have. So think about what is your ideal scenario? Because that helps too. You need to have that focus, but then make a list of uh, who you know, who might be able to connect you with those people. So collaboration, it's, it's important to have that awareness, but also to be open to what may come your way. That's 100% true. I like how Jay Kunzo put it um, in a tweet, and this is a while back, but it, it really stuck with me. He said, when you're talking to somebody, particularly in this kind of an instance, instead of asking, uh, what do you need or how can I help you? Very open-ended, but not helpful questions, quite frankly, because I, I don't know you. I don't know what you can do for me. So how am I supposed to tell you how you can help me unless it's just write me a check, right? He said, he said, instead of saying, how can I help you? Say, what is your number one priority right now? What are you working on? Because I can tell you that. I can tell you what my top priority is right now. I can tell you what I'm working on right now, what's important to me professionally. And as I'm telling you that, as you said, that will give you ideas, hopefully. Um, at least it'll give you an understanding. Maybe the ideas will come later or the or the connections, the referrals that'll come later. But that will help you, I think, a lot better than just saying, how can I help you? Or how can you help me? It, 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 that, that, it's a very good point. And, and that, we also can digress to that all important, what is it, 30 second elevator pitch? You mm -hmm. need to be able to, to state who you are. I can actually do mine in like 10. Um, <laughs> but the who you are, how you help, for me, it's, you know, my mission is to help as many people as possible figure out what they want and how to get it. My motto is goal setting simplified. And it all revolves into the who I'm trying to reach, which is people who need help figuring out what they want and how to get it, whether it's a business, whether it's an organization, whether it's an individual, someone who's lost. And unfortunately, there are plenty of those people in the universe right now. So if you can get your who you are statement, you know, your mission, your motto, your what drives you straight, then that's also going to help you when you have those kinds of conversations. Absolutely. And I I feel I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you. So, Mike, what is your top priority right now? Well, my top priority would probably be that that Twitter event. Now, I'll tell you, at Agora Pulse, <clears throat> we have been using the OKR method of goal setting. And so, for those who don't know, that stands for objective key results. Um, and also, you could add initiatives on the end of that. So, the idea is you decide as a as a company 
what are our most important objectives? And then individual teams and individual people then come up with their objectives, their initiatives, their key results that are going to help the companies top objectives and because we're right up at the towards the end of the quarter i haven't yet determined next quarter's objectives and my initiatives and key results but i'm assuming for me it's probably going to be very much like this one which is have an amazing summit focus on twitter and outperform this quarter summit that's usually my goal right so i want to increase attendance increase the content that's created or the quality of the content that's created and so on so yeah it's probably my my most important thing. Awesome. So if there are any like major Twitter people watching, you can always keep an eye out for the announcement, which I'm sure will be soon and reach out to Mike or through me, right? Because we're mm -hmm. all about introductions and making connections. Because one of my big things is you can't, the reason why I always talk about networking is we don't live in a vacuum. You can't reach your goals by yourself. You need your people. And then you get to through your people, you get to meet more people and et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to flip to the next question, which is kind of the opposite of what we've been talking about, um, but still really important, which is what are signs you should avoid collaboration? Uh, in my statement, this is what I said in the chat last night was usually if you see a red flag right away, you know, unbalanced workload, you're more enthusiastic than the other person. Your missions and your visions don't align. Don't try to make it work. Do a realistic assessment and see if it's going to end up being mutually beneficial because sometimes you can work through things like that, but most of the time, if there's a sign that says stop that's like big with flashing lights, you should probably <laughs> reconsider and go another route. So. That that's I and I'm I always tell people I'm one of the those logical people who trust their intuition. If you've got a voice in your head that's screaming at you, you should listen because your voice usually knows. Uh, yeah, Bob? and I would agree with that a hundred percent. You said it right, where collaboration must be mutually beneficial. Now, depending on who you're talking to and the nature of the collaboration, it might be an ongoing relationship. In fact, it should be an ongoing relationship. So there might be a series of collaborations. And in which case, it might be okay if, you know, on this particular collaboration, the other person benefits more than you. And, and then it goes and it slides back and forth, right? That's wonderful. Um, in fact, that's probably the norm. I mean, I, I would I would probably be challenged to come up with a collaboration where both sides benefit completely equally. But what we want to avoid is where it's very dramatically lopsided, right? Where you're putting in a massive amount of work and the other person is not, and yet they're benefiting a massive amount. It's an obvious example, but that's what you want to look for and watch out for. And don't be afraid to stand up for yourself. I think if you're going to go into and enter in a partnership and a collaboration, it should be with somebody that you have a professional relationship with that you've known for a while. But even then, you maybe have never worked with them before. And I've been in those situations where I've known somebody for a long time. We've connected. We've maybe shared each other's content on social and that sort of thing. But I've never actually worked with them. So when I do start working with them, it's a little bit of an eye-opening experience. You know, maybe they just don't do things the way that I would. Maybe they don't communicate the way that I would. And I would hazard a guess most of the issues that arise during and throughout a, a collaboration are probably due to communication. You're not communicating enough. They're not communicating enough. You two are not on the same page. You're not communicating in a way that makes it clear what expectations are. And so that's going to be a learning experience and a learning process for each of us, whether or not, first of all, somebody is, is a good person to collaborate with, but more importantly, how do I need to communicate to avoid potential issues in the future? I would hazard a guess that most of us are not going to want to go into a collaboration and fail. Most of us are going to want to go into a collaboration and 
see the benefits that we envision from the start, right? Reaching each other's right. audiences or, or building business or saving each other time, whatever it is that, that your goal is. So go into it with some good communication and some open-mindedness about what the other person's needs are, where their strengths and deficiencies might lie and, and be willing to work through those if you can. And then not work through them if it's just not going to work out. Be okay with that. Okay, well, you jumped into the next question, but I want to yes. back it, which is how <laughs> you set your collaboration up for success. I'm sure we're shocked here. Uh, well, the questions are also meant for flow of conversation. So when they don't trip over each other, I get a little worried. Uh, what do you do if you're like in the middle of a class? Did you have any challenges in your, I'm sure you probably can't talk about it, in any of your projects where it's like, oh my goodness, this is a problem, and you're so deep into it, what do you do? Well, no pressure. Yes. I know, that was kind of I know. Well, I'm obviously not going to name any names <laughs> whatsoever. That's just not going to happen. But yeah, absolutely. There have been, there've been times uh, with events, um, with other collaborations, because I do a lot of different collaborations, particularly with my role at Agorapulse. That's basically my job right, is to collaborate on behalf of Agora Pulse with influencers and other brands. And sometimes those work out and sometimes they don't. I will say, in all honesty, most of the time, I will work through whatever it is I've committed to do. And that will simply be the last time I collaborate with somebody if it's, if it's a bad experience. Um, if I feel like they're not putting in enough effort, that sort of thing. There have been instances, uh, as I talk through and think through past experiences, there have been instances where I've been working with an influencer and they haven't been doing what I would ask them to do. They haven't been responsive or um, collaborating. And so we have to have a tough conversation. And I will have explained to them, look, I've been asking you to do these things. You said you were on board with the whole project, but this hasn't happened. And what's really interesting is that almost every time I have had that conversation, the influencer has come back to me relieved because they know, they're not <laughs> dumb. they know they haven't been doing what I asked them to do. And they have their reasons for it. It's not because they don't like me or they don't like Agorapal's or they didn't want to do it. It's usually because they've got too much pressure. Maybe, you know, they're a solopreneur, they're running maybe their own agency or something like that. And they've got a lot of client work, maybe too much client work, but they don't have enough revenue. So they're not finding balance. And when I come to them and say, look, this, this really isn't working. I basically want to relieve you of your obligation to me. They're relieved because now, first of all, they're not like, afraid to talk to me and you know they're, they're no longer under that obligation to fulfill their end of the bargain whatever it was so again i'm going to say it again it, it comes back to communication uh it would have been better had there been more communication up front and that's just as much on me as that influencer but now that i took that step and said look we have a problem let's talk about it we're able to move forward. And, and I'm happy to say everyone that I'm thinking of in my brain, the, these influencers, <laughs> they're, they're still working with me. We're still collaborating. Now, the what that collaboration looks like has changed. It needed to change. But we still have a relationship. We still have a friendship. If I'm at a real life event at some point in the future and I see them, I'm not going to have to run the other way. <laughs> right? We still have that relationship there. I, I And this is something that I think comes up all the time, you know, the, and this fear thing, it's like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? I have a problem. Yeah. And so many people are, are like, okay, I can't talk to them. And they're, it's, it creates so much stress. And I think what people need to realize is if you're having the problem, the person you're having the problem with is also having a problem. And it's amazing when someone makes the first step, whether it's you or the other person, it really is like a release. It's like, oh my goodness. It's sort of like, do you ever notice, you know, back in real life when you made plans with people, if you had to cancel with someone, 
they usually say, oh, I'm so glad because it's a really busy week. Let's do it next week. Do you ever, that happened to you all mm -hmm. the time. It's sort uh -huh. of like you, you try and push yourself to do something and you're stressed out and you're like, you know what? I can't. I'm just going to I'm just going to say it. I'm going to tell them I can make it happen. But if you don't mind and then they're like, Shoo. yeah. It, think of if you have to in the word confrontation is such an ugly word, but I think that that's the word that people come to mind. If, if you're at an impasse, if you're doing something that's not working, no one wants to have a confrontation. But if you think about it as a conversation and, and one trick that I love and I've been doing it for years and telling people for years, if you go into a conversation with the result that you want in the back of your head, it's more likely to turn out the way you want it to. Because if you go into a conversation all stressed out, oh, it's going to be this, this, and this, you're kind of creating it through the negative energy. I'm, I'm very law of attraction, power of positive thinking. I'm sure the surprise is no one. <laughs> but if you go into a conversation saying, you know, I'm going to ask this person if we can revisit what we're working on together. And they're going to be happy. And if you think about it and come into it, your voice is going to be different. Your body language is going to be different. Your attitude is going to be different. And the person you're speaking with is going to sense it. And they're going to be like, yes, it's a good thing. So just Absolutely. something to think about. Uh, because, And this comes out in the Twitter chat all the time. I have to talk to my boss. I have to talk to my partner. I have to talk to my this person and I don't know what I'm going to do or their win for the week is I talked to this friend who was bothering me and we resolved an issue or I was able to speak to my client about this and it worked out. And that is a win. If you go into something thinking it's going to turn out one way, it'll turn out the way. What? What is it? There's this great, I think it's it's a Ford quote, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> so exactly it, it right. completely applies to to conversations, collaborations, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people think that way with, with conflict management, like you said, you know, going into it with a positive mindset and 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 that sort of thing. I like marrying that with what we talked about at the outset of the program, which is going into relationship building and collaboration with an open mind. And so to be very specific, what I would say is if you were starting to have a conversation with a potential collaborator, have some things that you would like to, to accomplish, but be very open to opportunities, be very open to possibilities because they might have a different idea and another suggestion that's even better than what you possibly imagined. I'll give you a great example. I talked to Ann Handley about marketing profs partnering with Agora Pulse on the last summit. And I, I wasn't really going to ask her for very much. I really just wanted th their presence. I wanted them to have a booth in, inside the group. And she said, well, what else can I do? I was like, well, what else would you like to do? She knew I was having Alan Gannett as the opening keynote. And she said, well, Alan's like one of my best friends. Can I introduce him? She asked me if she could come I on our live opening keynote and be the MC and the introducer of the keynote. And I was like, absolutely. <laughs> you can come on and introduce him. Of course. So that was amazing. And that was just because I, you know, we came into it very open and we just had a nice conversation and we weren't, you know, pigeonholed into, you know, thinking this is what we wanted out of that relationship and that collaboration. And it goes back to, to another really good phrase, which is if you don't ask, the answer is always no. Yeah, very true. Okay, so going back to making collaborations a success, mm -hmm. um, what recommendations do you have? I know we've covered a lot of this, but I don't care. We can go, we can, we can um, summarize. What do you think people should do to set a collaboration up for success? Well, I think one quick key is to, to have it in writing. 
and, and that could be as simple as an email. I'm not saying there has to be a contract or anything legal involved, but make sure that you have in writing what it is that we're working on, who's expected to do what. I think that's super important. If like we had the book launch, right? And we had five people working on the book launch plus the publisher and the publisher's entrepreneur. They're kind of a big deal. They've got a webinar team. They have a social team, right? So there's a lot of people involved. So we had meetings and we had documentation and we had a strategy document that I think at last glance was 19 pages long, but it was crystal clear who was doing what, who was talking to who. We had a bunch of influencers we wanted to reach out to. Well, who had the best relationship with in Hanley or, or somebody else who should reach out to those people? We documented that. So it was never unclear who was doing what and the expectations were all there. And so as a result, it was a huge success and, and we had a lot of fun doing it. Had we not written all that down, we might have saved some time up front, but then we would have been stepping on each other's toes. Things would have been missed. Things that we probably really wanted to get done would have fallen through the cracks and it would not have been the success that it was. That's amazing. And, and it's true. It's You need to have things written down, have the clear roles, see who does what best. I, I was a marketing coordinator in corporate America for a few years. So I totally, you know. I totally you know. get the value of, yeah, because if someone calls someone and they said, oh, your associate called me two days ago, everybody mm. looks silly. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it's a definite baseball time. Yeah. But but when you're doing things like that, and come on, you're social media people. So every everybody had some overlap because I know like most of you. Actually, I know four of you before the launch. I knew three of you and there are five of you or whatever. But th there's the different overlaps. And we arranged this before you started doing your, okay, who wants to interview the people? We had already set this up. So it, you, when you're looking to collaborate, it's great to have communication, documentation, who does what. And that also, if you've got those kind of documents, everybody has sort of a bar that they're reaching towards. <clears throat> or something. Yeah, and today, I mean, there's just, right? there's no excuse because you've got email, you've got, Google Docs, which are free. You've got Facebook Messenger and other kinds of instant messenger platforms, which are all free. And if you need to, you can kind of go the next level to a project management system like Asana or Basecamp or Trello or something like that. Probably don't need to for most collaborations. But with all those free tools at your disposal, you know, not to mention a phone that we all have and can pick up and call each other, right? There's just no excuse not to communicate clearly with everyone involved. I I am so with you and I while there are while there is value to project management systems most of the time Google Sheets and Google Docs they work better because you don't need the bells and whistles. You just mm -hmm. need information that everybody is sharing that everybody is working towards. Absolutely. Yeah, that entire summit, that entire event, I planned it out of one Evernote note. I love it. Everything was in an Evernote note, uh, which was just, it was easy for me. That's that's my tool of choice when it comes to personal writing and, and organization. And I just, I have it all in there and I know what to do, when to do it. And I'm directing, now I'm communicating with other people, with other channels, right? Like inside of Agorapulse, we use Slack, we use Google Docs, we use email. Um, outside of Agorapulse, one of, here, here's a quick tip. I've made it a, a point that when I'm working with other influencers, I use their platform of choice, right? If they're heavy on Instagram, we're in Instagram DMs. If they're on Twitter, we're in Twitter DMs. If, if email is best for them, I'm, I'm using email and I'm making note of that and I'm trying to do that religiously. I, I'm probably in Facebook. I just gestured like you can see. I'm in Facebook <laughs> Messenger most of the time. Um, but... Uh, yeah, because I want to make sure that I'm doing whatever I need to do to help that other person be a success. And if that means I'm using five different platforms, I can use five different platforms. It's not that hard. I've got all the apps, got all the apps on my desktop and my phone. That's what I do. 
and and I'm I'm certain. Um, I think this came up that one of the people who was at the summit asked a question about how to keep track of all the different people that they met, and I said, you cannot two choices. When you connect with someone on LinkedIn, you write a note. That's just proper LinkedIn etiquette is say, hey, we met at the summit, let's connect. If you put that in every communication or if someone connects with you and you write something back to reference, you can always go back into that, into that chat to see, oh, because I think I had, I got a nice to meet you too, came through my LinkedIn and I'm like, what's this name? And I looked in and it was someone from the summit who I said, thank, I wrote, thank you for attending my session. It was someone who made a comment in um, the group, I believe. Um, so I connected on LinkedIn. I'm like, that's why that name's familiar. And then the other thing, and I talk about this a lot, I love my Google Docs. I love my my legal pad. And usually I, I do notes in both, but it's always one running legal pad and one running document. So everything related to a certain event or initiative is together. So you don't have to spend your time looking for your notes. So figure out what works for you, where you are best to streamline. And that's enough. It just sets you up for success, which is Absolutely. the question, right? Yeah. And, and I love that what you said about how you talk to them on their platform of choice, because mm -hmm. that you're, you're making the collaboration easy for the partner. And everybody wants things that are easy. I think so many people overthink so many things. And that goes back to the, oh my goodness, I have to have this conversation and you're having this, this argument, the voices in your head, and you haven't even said a word to the person you need to actually talk to. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and, and look at Nathalie is like pulling your quotes right and left. Thank you so much for, for watching and chiming in. Okay, before I'm going to let you think of what tip you want to leave people on, but we need to give people a bonus goal related to collaboration. Now, I have an idea, but I want to know if you have one first. So, okay, so just any kind of a goal yeah. related to collaboration? Yes. Hmm. I would say, and maybe I'll cheat and say this is also my tip, but my goal would be, um, I, I would say, write down 10 names, write down 10 people that you could potentially collaborate with yet this year. So we're almost the end of Q3, I think in quarters, we're, we're very quarter based in, in Agorapol. So let's look at Q4, give yourself a little bit of time to think this through. Who are 10 people that you could potentially collaborate with next quarter because one of the things i talk about a lot in influencer marketing is that when i'm looking to build relationships and work with influencers i don't work one at a time because if i did i would never get anywhere with with my business i would never be able to scale so i'm developing relationships with dozens quite frankly hundreds of people simultaneously they're all different levels and they all move at different speeds so maybe today an influencer that i'm working with is ready to collaborate on a live video project another influencer that i'm working with it might be six months from now before they're ready the opportunity's there the timing is right whatever the case might be but if i didn't start that relationship today that six months is never going to happen right i got to be patient for that so i need to have all those different uh pots on the fire, you know, pick your metaphor. So ducks yeah, in a row. There's, there's my goal. Ducks in a row. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I, I, I love your goal. Can I edit it just a little? Cause I can't yes. help myself. Yes. Um, make it 20. Okay. Make a list of 20 potential. And I want five of the people in there to be like dream people. Because again, mm -hmm. if you don't ask, the answer is always no. So, Think of, and make five of them super easy. And then the other 10 can be, you know, somewhere in between. One of the things that's so important with, with making lists and brainstorming is you want to have at least 20 because the first five are easy. The next five are kind of easy. But when you start hitting 15 or 20, you have to really 
give yourself some time for that introspection to take a look see what's out there what what would be a good mutually beneficial situation for yourself and so yeah i it, if you want to only do 10 you can but 15 20 and, and go for those reach people because you don't know where a relationship is going to go you don't know who you're going to meet just by having a conversation i had i was at a, a networking thing last tuesday and later that person was like hey it was great to meet you let's have a conversation and i'm like how about tomorrow okay and we have so several mutual friends from different areas of life it was like usually when i go to these events i meet at least three people that i should have met mm -hmm several times and it was you never know where a conversation is going to lead what road you're going to go down um you need to know what you want who you are and then you go on those paths and see where it takes you with that positive attitude knowing that anything's possible awesome okay um do you want a tip now yes you're not you're I've not got a tip. getting I've got a tip. out of giving that that last tip but also let people know where they can find you okay why don't cool. you do that so, first yeah um i i have a lot of sites and a lot of social profiles so the the easiest way to find me today is socialmediabook.shop uh because you can learn about the book and you can learn about me i've got an author page there and Frank, frankly, more importantly, you can learn about my co-authors because they're way cooler than I am, uh, way smarter than I am, which leads me to my tip, which is to see how I segued there. That is perfect. That was beautiful. My tip is to form your own mastermind group. And when I say mastermind, I am hearkening back to Napoleon Hill's definition of mastermind, which is not one person who is mentoring or teaching and other people are paying him. I don't like that kind of a mastermind. I'm talking about a, a group of peers and colleagues. So these probably aren't coworkers. These are, if you're like in working for a company, you would reach out to other people in other companies who are doing similar things. So they're on a similar career path or direct trajectory and form a group where you get together weekly, monthly, quarterly, doesn't matter as long as it's a regular routine where you're getting together and you're talking and you're sharing because you're going to form relationships and friendships, I guarantee it. And you will create a support system for yourself and you will create collaborative opportunities for yourselves and each other. Now that might not manifest into the kinds of collaborations we've been talking about today, which are like, you know, marketing initiatives. It doesn't have to be that way. You know, collaboration could be, I start sharing with you how I'm solving having to remote teach a kindergartner and you share with me some of the things that you figured out for remote teaching a kindergartner or first grader, whatever you have at home. And we go through this together and we share our wins and losses and challenges and successes together. And now we're, we're collaborating on life. Isn't that awesome? So that's what I've been blessed to have with Jen and Stephanie and Amanda. And I would strongly recommend, I even put together a free workshop to help people understand because I am so impassioned about how beneficial it is to have that kind of group around you. That That's wonderful. And that that's what I've been actually doing for years is so I had my write on live group, which is on hiatus for obvious reasons, but once a month it was, okay, what are your wins? What are your goals? What are you working on? How can you help? And if anyone who's watching is not yet a member of my Write On Online group, it's facebook.com slash group slash Write On Online. Uh, every day I've got a different thread, which is really for that purpose of, okay, what are, you, what are your networking goals this week? What are you working on? Toot Your Horn Thursday is my favorite day because then people can share their wins and, make connections for things that they had no idea. And my favorite example is the woman whose win was she did an audio studio so she could finally record audiobooks. And about a month later, someone was looking for someone to record her audiobook. So sometimes, so nice. I made sure they met. 
So that that's if you want a large group scenario, please join. I'll put the link in the comments. But there is some value to find one, two or three like minded people that you are talking with on a regular basis. If you need just someone to direct you, that's the kind of coaching that I do. But find your people and make sure that you're communicating with them on a regular basis because you don't know what ways in which other people can help you and you can help them unless you are connected, unless you are having some form of communication, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, and I think, oh, I have to, we're on Natalie's <laughs> good list. I love it. I, I love it. Okay. 18 to go. That was, that was very sweet of you to chime in. And there we're you connected. You can reach out to either one of us. Um, and let me real quick put my group in the comments. Okay. Um, what else? I think we're good. Okay. Um, you can, if you want to learn more about me, the Deb Method, anything, or the recaps, just go to thedebmethod.com. And if you're curious about more information for your goal guide, you can, this fun link, yourgoalguidebook.com will take you to the Amazon link. And this has been fun. You know, talk about your, your good collaborations, like out of the blue, we've known each other for years. I spoke at your summit, you come on my show, we're in connections. And it also opened, it connected me with new people and mm -hmm. probably you with new people here as well. So you just, you don't know where things are going to lead, but you have mm -hmm. to be willing to take that journey and see what happens. Right? Couldn't agree more. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Mike Alton, for joining us today. All these links and all this information will be in the recap on the devmethod.com slash blog. Everybody knows their bonus goal. Um, you can connect with me on Twitter every Sunday night. Uh, the tweets are from at the dev method and just follow the goal chat hashtag. And I will be back next Monday at 4 p.m. Pacific on the Mango Facebook page with another awesome guest for Goal Chat Live. Okay, everybody, ready, set, collaborate. <laughs> Go do it. Yeah, thanks, Mike. And thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks, everybody.